Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. In this video, I'm going to continue some of my discussions in previous videos on tipping points in the climate system. Um, previously, I talked about the cryospheric tipping points, like the, uh, you know, basically melting from Greenland and Antarctica, etc. But in this video, I'm going to focus on the tipping points that affect changes in the circulation patterns, whether they be atmospheric circulation patterns, like the jet streams, for example, or the shift in the Beaufort gyre in the Arctic, or whether they be ocean circulation changes, like the Atlantic meridional overturning circulation, or AMOC. But first of all, I want to give a little demonstration here so of stability and systems that are in different phases. So here we have, um, there's a couple magnets here and there's magnets inside this assembly and we can balance this guy here and uh, hey, ah, oh, we can, come on, stay here. Okay, no, you stay, 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 stay. Okay, look, look, what's this? Look, what's this? Okay, other ideas. Okay, so I can spin this here and there's points of stability. So I can tilt it up this way and it stays stable. I can rock it back and forth a little bit and it's not very stable. Or I can tilt it this way and it's certainly not stable. So there, there's a fine set of constraints whereby this top spins around quite happily. And there can be small perturbations on it and it stays within its zone of stability. But you cross a threshold or a tipping point and it breaks down. That zone of stability breaks down and you go into chaotic behavior. Okay, so let's get right into the video here. Okay, so if you go to the Potsdam Institute website, if you just Google Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact Research, tipping points, okay, tipping elements, and you get this screen here. And like I said, I previously discussed the cryospheric ones, the so West Antarctic and East Antarctic basins, methane clathrates, the Greenland ice sheet, the Arctic sea ice, and the permafrost, the Udoma, the Siberian permafrost. So here we're talking about the circulation pattern. So the El Nino, Southern Oscillation, the monsoon in Southwest North America, the AMOC, the Atlantic Thermohaline Circulation, the West African monsoon, the Indian summer monsoon, of course, the jet streams, and the ocean currents. Okay, just to remind you, um, this is my website, paulbeckwith.net. Just Google paulbeckwith.net and you can find this. And here's where I previously posted about the, the very slow sea ice, ice regrowth and the Beaufort gyre shifting configuration, whereas previously I posted on these... Um, tipping points, the, the abrupt cryospheric tipping elements in the climate system. Okay, uh, just a reminder that I do all of this work as an independent researcher, trying to connect the dots, etc. The only funding that I get for all of this work is from your donations from PayPal. So if you supported me on PayPal, then I appreciate it and thank you. So just a reminder on that, this is my Twitter account where, um, and this is the last posting where I talked about the Beaufort gyre stalling, reversing the, the, the messed up ocean circulation and atmospheric circula circulation, the salinity, temperature changes, etc. in the Arctic. So let's get back to these uh, tipping points.
Shackleton uh, doesn't want to cooperate today, so I had to let him out. Okay, so so these are the ones I've discussed already, the cryogenic tipping point. And now I'm going to talk about the circulation system. So there's some very um, key things that we have to be concerned about with these tipping points. First is the slowdown of the Atlantic thermohaline circulation. So think of the Gulf Stream coming up off the east coast of North America, going northeast across the Atlantic, coming right up into the Arctic, bringing warm water um, to regions. Also, as the water moves north, it's very salty water, it cools down, it reaches points, when it reaches fringes of the sea ice, then it, um, some of the water freezes, forming the ice. If it's in the winter, that rejects salt. So what's left over is even saltier, heavy cold water, which sinks to the bottom of the seafloor and, and propagates the, the ocean circulation pattern. So we've seen a slowing down of this AMOC, Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, something like 15% or so in the last number of decades. And we're seeing large pools of fresh water south of Greenland that are interfering with the Gulf Stream. We're also seeing hot spots, persistent hot spots in the water off Svalbard, where right now the water is about 18 degrees Celsius, extremely warm temperatures in, in in uh, one hot spot in particular, just to the south um, west of Svalbard. Um, so we're seeing lots of these unexpected things occurring. We're getting, um, I'm, I'll talk about disruption of the South Pacific climate oscillation and talk about what that is. And basically the strengthening of the El Nino. We had a very powerful El Nino a few years ago. We set record temperatures. Um, on the planet and the probability of another El Nino occurring is extremely high. Normally it happens every two to seven years, but it seems to be coming more frequent under continuing climate change. In fact, it could even become almost a persistent, um, quasi-permanent feature. Um, and of course this has huge implications on global circulation patterns and on stream weather events and on temperatures and everything else. We're seeing a slowdown or stagnant stagnation of the planetary waves of the jet streams. Okay, so so these jet streams are slowing down and becoming wavier because of the greatly warming Arctic. This reduces the temperature the greatly warming Arctic reduces the temperature gradient with the equator, causing causing these jet streams to slow down and become much wavier. But also there's a strong feedback in play because when the ridges of the jet stream go very, very high up into the Arctic, even in the middle of the winter when it's completely dark, they bring warm, humid air up there, lots of heat, and they displace cold air. And when the cold air gets displaced very far south into the troughs of the jet streams, that also represents a loss of cold air in the Arctic and therefore a, a uh, large warming of the Arctic. This is the biggest effect that we're seeing, that we're experiencing on the ground in our cities and countries around the planet. Extremes, weather events, increasing frequency, severity, and duration, also happening in locations where they've never happened before. The destabilization of the Indian monsoon is another changing circulation pattern is of concern. Up to 90% of rainfall in India comes from the regular summer monsoon. Um, and it depends on the, um, when the monsoon is on in the summer, the Indian continent is very warm, air rises over the Indian continent, creates a low pressure area at the surface, which draws in the warm, moist, humid air from the ocean. And then that air is forced upwards by convective list, lifting. The, um, there's condensation, there's clouds, there's lots of rainfall. That drives the Indian monsoon. 
We also have a similar monsoon, not, a, not as large, but West African monsoon, and that impacts on the Sahara and the Sahel. Um, it, caught, it changes the water regi regimes there, and the, there's something called the Intertropical Convergence Zone that runs near the uh, equator, but it goes preferentially, shifts from the equator towards the hemisphere where the, that is, 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 is undergoing summer. And depending on the, the amount of those shifts and the waviness of the ITCZ, Intertropical Convergence Zone, we can get changes in the water regimes in these regions, and these are vital for, for people that are trying to farm um, and live in those regions. Also, the, we're getting a drying out of the southwestern United States. There is a North American monsoon, and that is also shifting. So I'm going to talk in detail about all of these points. Um, but the first thing I want to show you is if you Google Earth Null School, and go and look at the surface mean sea level pressure in the air, then you get this. And uh, th these are areas of low pressure. These are areas of high pressure. So what you can see, what I, what I want to show you here is I often show the jet stream, but I want to show you the, the um, like look at all of the different um, low pressure areas. You know, these are the higher pressure areas here, one over Greenland. The high pressure areas, 1040, 1030 to 1040 millibar, and then the low pressure areas, 990, 989, and, and uh, so on. Okay, and if we go into the southern hemisphere, you can see uh, extremely low pressure areas here, high pressure area here. Okay, there's a lot of structure, and if you, if you, you can actually tell, I mean, th this is because the jet streams. So if I go to surface air um, at 250 millibar, okay, the winds, then you see this familiar pattern. This is in the northern hemisphere with the jet streams, ridges and troughs here, you know, very, very wavy and fractured and broken jet streams, and just as much so in the southern hemisphere. And you can relate these areas, these dips will be low pressure areas, the ridges will be high pressure areas, uh, which show up on the mean sea level, uh, mean sea level uh, pressure um, diagrams. Okay, so I'm gonna go now and I'm gonna talk about all of these different factors in a bit more detail. I've already talked about feedbacks or tipping points in the Arctic um, in my previous, uh, some recent previous videos. So I'm going to focus on the ones that the Potsdam uh, site website is talking about here. Tipping elements, the Achilles heel of the Earth system. Okay, so the first thing is the AMOC. Okay, the, so climate change it, it says here, this article may shut down a current that keeps North Atlantic warm. So the Atlantic meridional overturning circulation, it's like a conveyor belt. It brings warm water from the tropics to the colder, cooler regions of the North Atlantic. As it moves northward, it loses its heat to the atmosphere. The, the water gets denser. It's very salty. So, it, so, it's the, so the density is pretty high, so it sinks, okay? And then it sinks down and it moves southward. So there's, this thing is shifting. So this is a detailed, um, this is a detailed view here of the, um, okay, th th this guy here, let me try to uh, expand this a bit. Okay, so this is a, a detailed view here. So what we have is, the red is surface water. So there's a loop here and some of the water comes up here and it for breaks, it forks into two different flows here. One comes north between, um, uh, one comes up here. Uh, there's Europe, Great Britain, 